installed the launch vehicle stage adapter, uh, which adapts the core stage to the upper stage for, for SLS. Is about to roll into the, the Pegasus barge, where it'll go down to uh, MAF, the Machine Assembly Facility, uh, to pick up a couple more pieces of hardware before it goes to KSC. It's mainly a, a structural piece. So it transmits loads um, down from the Orion spacecraft into the, into the, the, the core stage and then also transmits loads up. So it's a, um, it's a big load transmission device. We're around it so much and we realize how big it is, but we sort of get used to it until you see it like this. And then you see it stacked on the entire core stage and it's massive, you know, and it's just, it's really incredible to, to see the finished work and see it all together. It, it hits me over and over again in waves. It's just like, this is happening. Like, I have hands on this. I've seen it. You know, it's, it's is something that, you know, I always hoped we would go back to the moon. Did not think I would be this, you know, a part of a team that's this influential in making that happen. Um, and yeah, it's just, you know, it's Artemis 2 is great. And it's leading up to Artemis 3, where we're landing. And, and again, like, Marshall's had such an important role. And just, so proud and happy to be a part of it. Artemis has been woven into our culture. It has fostered collaboration across the aisles and across the ponds. It has grown beyond plans and preparations to include hardware and software. And now it has a heartbeat. Well, it's, it's a big deal because it's been 50 years since we sent people to the moon. So, you know, the Artemis II vehicle, uh, SLS, Orion spacecraft are similar to what we use for Artemis I. Uh, the Orion spacecraft is different from the standpoint of it. It can now sustain human life, uh, which, it which it could not have done on Artemis I. So we have the environmental control and life support. That's a big deal. Um, the Apollo system was pretty rudimentary. We've used what's the the um, the work that's that's happened on ISS to uh, upgrade the the ecosystem for Artemis too. So we'll do a 24-hour uh, orbit around the Earth, and then we'll use the Orion spacecraft to to give us the Delta V to get to the Moon. The, the astronauts are individually, they're fantastic people. Um, Christina is great. Um, she's been, I think she may have set the US record for longest woman in space. So that's the kind of people we're dealing with here, you know, people that are, that are they're, they're on the cutting edge of, of science and technology, so. Well, yeah, I would say <laughs> for lunar space flight, the ecosystem I mentioned earlier, the environmental control and life support is new. Um, the, uh, the way that we're going to the moon is very new, right? We've, we've experienced some of it with ISS, but we have collaborative partners now. It's not a kind of a monolithic program where it's just the U.S. going and doing stuff. Uh, as we continue to evolve our technology, you know, we'll bring on the Canadians, we'll bring on the Saudis, the, the Europeans. The Europeans already provide a lot of hardware, spaceflight hardware for us. The Orion service modules built by ESA. So uh, it's a different paradigm. So it's very different than what we did for Apollo. Our mission to the moon is no longer some far-fetched dream. This is reality. We are going. 
This is the next step in evolution. They're not just PowerPoint slides. They're actually metals being bent, shaped, formed to build the things that we're going to use. This is real. This is going to happen. We're going. We are going to the moon to learn how to live on other planets for the benefit of all. Let's go.